and Kim and Steve. <laughs> You know, we had a situation this morning that one of our members forgot a, a little part of her anatomy. And uh, they said, thank God for math. <laughs> she looked like alfalfa. It was a missing tooth. And I'm not going to say who it was. I wouldn't dare reveal that. But I'm glad we have mass sharing. <laughs> <laughs> that we can hide those unfortunate situations that happen to us from time to time. <laughs> we talked about our tooth this morning, and I remember when Linda and I first got married, I, my two front teeth are, are false. I got them knocked out playing football. and. Uh, Never forget, we were sitting at the table one day and I was eating a hamburger. And I looked down there at my burger and there sat my two front teeth. And my and just, uh, <laughs> those things happen sometimes, the most embarrassing moments of life. But now that that's out of the way. Uh, 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 I'm going to return the favor. Uh, since Donnie said he knew all the old songs, yeah. That's because his daddy taught him to it. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. And wrote some of them. <laughs> uh, I do have another announcement to make. Uh, Gordon is going to preach on Sunday morning on the 18th, and Bud is going to preach on Sunday night on the 18th. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to get a, a week's break, but I get to hear two wonderful preachers that I'm looking forward to. Amen. I do want to say uh, on behalf of Roger, he wants to thank the church uh, for their goodness uh, and their heart and, and for the love offering uh, for his father and, and for his mother. So let's be much in prayer for Roger's family as we hold that funeral service Tuesday at 11 o'clock at, at Roger's house. If you get an opportunity to come, he would love to see you. Okay, with that said, turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 19. I've spoken on Jezebel, I've spoken on the woman clothed with the sun and the moon, and I spoke this morning on the mother of hearts, and tonight I want to speak on the bride, the lamb's wife, Amen. the lady spoken of, the four women in, in Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7 and 8 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Then in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Then in verse 9, it says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show ye the bride the Lamb's wife. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you not, Lord, humbly as I know how, asking that you would honor your word. Lord, that you would just glorify your word, that you would glorify your Son as he's brought out into the word. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that there be one here tonight that doesn't know you in the free part of sin. Dear God, that the Holy Spirit might woo them and draw them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Have your will and your way in everything that's said and done tonight. And Lord, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we see that the Lamb's wife, or the bride, it's the same person, is the church. The called out body of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I won't put you in suspense on saying who is the bride, who is the Lamb's wife, because we should all know that up to this point. 
But I want us to look for a few minutes at some of the things that the church is compared to. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, 15, it is compared to a house. It says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and, and ground of truth. So it's, for, it's compared to a house there. Then in Ephesians chapter 2, 21, it's compared to a building. It says, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 27, it is compared to a body. Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. So we find here the answer to the question, what is the church? It is the body of Christ. And that's how you have to look at it. Yes, we are the bride, but we are his body. He is the head. And we are the body, fitly framed together to be one. So what is the definition of the word church? The word church is not found in the Old Testament because it was a hidden mystery in the Old Testament. It's, it was unknown, and, and on the, the only person that made it known to the New Testament church in the beginning was the Apostle Paul. So I find that it's first mentioned in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 16 and 18 when Christ spoke himself, saying, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We see from what he said there that he's speaking as the church as being yet in the future. I will build my church, not I have or I am. And I say this because I want, I want you to understand this. I will build my church. Because they want to ask you in a few minutes when the church was first formed. So the Greek word is Ecclesia, it simply means to call out. So we are a called out assembly of believers in Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. Now, it's amazing how many different denominations and groups of people believe that there is only one way to heaven and that their way is the way. I mean, it's absolutely amazing to me. And I hear people say all the time, well, everyone has a right to believe what they want to believe. We're all going to the same place anyway. <clears throat> Listen, you certainly have a right to believe what you want to believe, but what you believe better be correct. If any way would do, then there is no way. If any way would do, then there is no way. Amen. It is Jesus Christ. Plus, minus nothing equals salvation. Now let's look at the Word of God for information on the great subject. What is the origin of the church? If I were to ask that question this morning, I'd probably get four or five different answers and I can understand why you feel the way that you feel but from the word of God and looking at it we first have to go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14 and find out that the church was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the church's original, excuse me, time of being in existence was before the foundation of the world in the mind of God, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Now, 
As I said before, the church was a mystery in the Old Testament. They didn't see it. They didn't know anything about it. And it was from hid from view. And that's why the Apostle Paul called it a mystery. Because they didn't understand it. They did not see the church. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 tells us, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I write a four and few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which is in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Mm -hmm. So what is the mystery? Is the church the mystery? It is. What makes up the church? Born again believers. What types of born again believers? Jews and Gentiles. It was revealed in the Old Testament that Gentiles would be saved. But what it was not revealed in the Old Testament was that the Gentiles and the Jews would be made up, would make up the same body. That they would be fellow heirs. The Jews could not see that. That was the mystery. There would be one body. The Jew and the Gentile, one body. We find this truth in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16. And that he might reconcile both, Jew and Gentile, unto God in one body by the cross, and having slain the enmity thereby. Then in verse 14 he says this, For he is our peace who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition, between us. The middle wall partition he was talking about was in the Holy of Holies. The Gentiles had to stay outside the Holy of Holies. There was a wall there. There was a veil. When Christ died on the cross, that veil was ripped in two. And it becomes one. The Jew and the Gentile becomes one body, the church, the bride of Christ. So now we ask, when did the church come into existence? A good question. Someone had you believe that the church came into existence when John the Baptist started preaching. No. John the Baptist was in the last Old Testament prophet. John the Baptist was preaching repentance to the nation of Israel so that the kingdom of heaven could be set up on the earth. John the Baptist didn't see the church. John the Baptist was not even alive when Christ died, was buried, and resurrected. So the church did not start with John the Baptist. Now, others say that Christ started the church in his ministry when he was doing all the miracles and the wonders and the signs. That's not true either. The word of God states that the gospel is what saves us, okay? And what is the gospel? The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's why Jesus said, and I will build my church. It was yet future. He could not build his church until his work was finished. And he had to go sit down on the right hand of the Father and then his church could start. He had to do the finished work. He had to have the death, the burial, and the resurrection for the church to be a body. Now, here's the key to get the birthday of the church correct. 
remembering that the church is the body of Christ. We read in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head. Christ is the head, we are the body. Over all things to the church, which is his body. So to understand the when the church started, we have to know that we are the body, he is the head. And he had to have his work finished. He had to die, he had to be buried, and he had to be resurrected. Mm -hmm. Then the church could start. So when is the, the actual date of the church? The gospel, the grace of God, is what saves people. So there had to be a witness. And get this. There had to be a witness to all of this. That witness was the Holy Ghost of God. He saw it all. It's expedient that I go away. If I go my way, I cannot send the Comforter. And the Comforter will indwell you. He'll live on the inside of you. And the Comforter will keep you. Okay? So it was the Holy Ghost's job to be the witness. The third person of the Trinity. So we, how do we get into this body? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God, are we all baptized into one body? He's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The moment that you accept Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit baptizes you in Christ. Amen. And you become a member of the body. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. And that is the Holy Spirit of God. So this scripture teaches me that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is what puts us in Christ. You know, you can have people every day that the Bible calls them professors, but not possessors. People say all the time, you know, I've I mentioned before, I used to play golf with a guy, and he said, you know, I think in a, in a month or two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get saved. I'm going to let the preacher save me. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it just amazed me. You know, I said, look, the, first of all, the preacher can't save you. I said, if the Holy Spirit doesn't woo you, doesn't draw you to Christ, you're not going to get saved. You can't just pick a date and say, I, I, that's when I'm going to get saved. It's not like saying, I'm going to start my job on May the 1st. You can't do that unless you're hired. Uh, so people, people say that all the time. But there could be no church until after Pentecost. The church original day, birth date was the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost of God yes. went in and indwelt 120 believers and fell on them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, the early church was all Jewish up until Acts chapter 10. If you would turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now watch this. And they of the circumcision, the Jews, which believed were astonished. As many as with Peter, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They had never seen a Gentile get saved. They had never seen the Holy Spirit come on a Gentile. Now they are one body. Next page, Acts chapter 11, verse 14. Who shall tell these words? For by thou and all thy house shall be saved. 
So the Holy Spirit convicted these men. The Holy Spirit drew these men. The Holy Spirit indwelt these men and they fell down and asked Christ to be their Savior. Mm -hmm. And they started the church on the day of Pentecost. The Ephesians tell us in chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, there is one body and one spirit. This is Paul speaking. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that's not water, one God, the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. It is the Jew and the Gentile that makes up the body of Christ, the bride of the Lamb of God. Now, I'll leave you tonight with this thought, which to me is amazing, okay? The church as a body cannot die. The church as a body cannot die. Because a dead body will not work on a living head. <laughs> Jesus Christ is living today. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercessions for us. A dead body cannot work on a living head. So Colossians 3, 4, and I'll end with this. Don, you can come and get a song. You would please. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with him in glory. Isn't that wonderful to know that we as a church are going to come back with our Lord at the second advent of Christ? It's just amazing to me uh, that we cannot die no matter what we do we can't die as born again believers because we have eternal life through jesus christ our lord he is our head we are his body we function together if he's alive we're alive Amen. and i love that so let's keep this in mind as we go down through life and we get depressed and, and get in have gloomy days and think that nothing's going to go right and the world's just going to get worse and worse, which it is. But not for us. We've got a better place to go. We've got a, a promise that other people don't have. And that's eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's all stand. What a friend we have in